the beginning of our tariqa is the end of all other tariqas. And we explain that, so, because then uh, if you don't follow that, uh, we'll have difficulty of understanding. And then, why? Because it's scary. The why Bidaya Tunani Hayat Sa'iruturuk? The beginning of our tariqah is the end of many other tariqahs, all tariqahs, because in that tariqah, Nakshbandi tariqah, which is being called after Sayyidina Shahan Nakshbandi, it was before called after Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq or Sayyidina Ali. Because it is carry, is very honorable that carries a lot of the realities of the essence of Prophet. So he is asking, "Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim." Nawaitul Arba'in, Nawaitul Atikaf, Nawaitul Khalwa, Nawaitul Azza, Nawaitul Riyadh, Nawaitul Suluk. Lillahi Taala al-Adim fi hada al-Masjid. Atiyu Allah wa Atiyu Rasul wa Ali al-Amr minkum. And we explain also the importance of if we have how we can understand a wali. We explained some of that. A, a, a wali cannot be, people cannot know a wali is a wali unless if he do a karama, a miracle. Then they say, oh, this is a wali. But in reality, there are, most of the Naqshbandi uh, awliya, they don't show karama, they don't show miracles. To them, miracles is not allowed. As soon as a wali take his amana trust from his sheikh, first condition, first principle, he prevent him from doing any miracle. Because they don't want people to come on through miracles. They want people to come through aqidah, through, through belief and through love. It's easy for anyone to come through a miracle, isn't it? Even there are, uh, in India, a lot of, even in Marrakesh, a yeah. lot of these uh, uh, magicians, yes. not the magician in the West, <laughs> but yeah. what you call uh, magician of the East, like the magicians of uh, Sayyidina Musa, yeah. when they went to Pharaoh and they make, made all their robes to become like snakes. Yeah? Yeah. So you don't want something imaginary like that to show you a, a miracle. When Sayyidina Musa threw his stick, ate all their different magics. فَأَلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ They went into sajda saying, accepting Islam, accepting Sayyidina Musa, and believing because they saw the reality. So in Naqshbandi Tariqah or Awliyaullah, or any different Tariqah, but Mainly in Naqshbandi, because we are speaking about Naqshbandi, they don't like to show miracles. They come to you, they say, we have this problem. You say, okay, make Hasbun Allah wa or make this dua or that dua. They do, in indirect way, after some time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure them, or get them what they like. But that sheikh or that wali doesn't show himself that he helped them. He's covering himself. So the principle of the Naqshbandi sheikhs is not to show miracles as much as they can to cover themselves. 
for that reason what is important to them is haqaiq al hadr al muhammadiyya that's what's their focus is the divinely presence of the reality of prophet sayyidna muhammad alayhi afdal salatu was salam that's their concern that's their importance it's not to tell you what you have to you, what you are going to cook tomorrow or telling you what you are going to have uh, during your uh, tomorrow life or doing this or doing that horoscope people look and they speak about whatever they want to speak their concern is only to speak about the greatness of the reality of sayyidna muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam ذابوا بمحبة النبي they melted in prophet's love so to them there is no focus except Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu and from him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's why I uh, we Mawlana Sheikh Nazim may Allah give him long life in like 30-40 years ago when we were with when we he introduced us to Grand Sheikh all their concern I, I never I never saw oh, people standing in queue in Grand Sheikh's time or Maulana Sheikh at that time Maulana Sheikh Nazim asking him I have this problem or I have that problem or I have this or I have that pray for no they come to study with them they come to listen to this light, uh, a luminous lecture that Grand Sheikh gives or Morana Sheikh Nazim gives. N- nothing more. Now today you see Tariqa mo- mostly becoming like a, 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 a medical <laughs> clinic <laughs> or a uh, recruiting agency or a business yeah. there is nothing except uh, business bureau, speakers bureau business bureau uh, recruiting agency they go to the sheikh pray, make dua for us alhamdulillah it's okay no problem but no more people interested in the knowledge. In the Grand Sheikh's time, and Maulana Sheikh Nazim, till 75, 1975, the, their main concern was their teachings. That was the main concern. Because that is what we need. Who cares you you make money or you don't make money? Sit in your... You don't have a house. Sit under the bridge, eat onion and, uh, and uh, bread and live. You are not better than others, but have this knowledge in your heart. Their concern is the knowledge. Their concern is not to have uh, buildings and uh, where is my son going to study? Where is my daughter, which university going to go? Where is this one going to do this or that I want? No. I never saw anyone queuing there and asking for other than listening to what they say. It's Majlis Alam. What's in English? Association of Knowledge. Uh, my uncle used to go to visit Grand Sheikh with all these uh, scholars, Sham scholars, Damascus scholars, Beirut scholars, 100, 150 scholars, they visit him. Only to listen to his talks. Nothing else. is much this alim. 
That's why the knowledge that awliya carries, they have to empty it. And if they don't see people to speak to, they, they, they feel uh, it feel too much because it keeps coming, this knowledge, they have to empty it. More comes. They don't like people come and sit and asking them what I do, this or how I can do that, what I paint my kitchen, I paint it green or I paint it blue, or what I am going to buy which house, what I am going to do this or do that. Which turban I have to wear, blue or red or green? Never was a question in Grand Sheikh's time and Maulana Sheikh at that time. Even today now, sometimes Maulana Sheikh Nazim likes, likes his, uh, his shirt, the right on the left. It's not? The, button. the buttons. And to bring them here. Now there are some Maurits, if they wear like that, if they don't see you wearing like that, they say, oh, you are not in Tariqa. <laughs> you are out of Tariqa. Why well, I'm out of Tariqa? You are not wearing uh, uh, the shirt that goes all the way, like, all the way to here, yeah. and with the buttons. This Tariqa became on how you dress, you wear the dresses. I know Maulana Sheikh Nazim's many students, they don't wear sunnah clothes even. And they do their awrads daily, day and night. In Grand Sheikh's time, similar. So, it's not what you wear, now it's mostly what you wear. Now, even if you don't recite Surah Al-Fatiha according to Hanafi school, they come to you and say, oh, you are not uh, following Islam. Why am I not following Islam? Because you are not reciting the Fatiha in the way that has to be read according to Maul They heard it from Maulana Sheikh Nazim because Maulana is Hanafi. So he likes to read, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alim Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'abidu Wa Iyaka Na'abidu Stop there. This is according to the Hanafi school. Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqim, you stop there. No, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, you stop there. Then Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in, you stop there. Then all the way to the end. Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina al Amta alayhim, Rayr al Mardub alayhim, Rayr al Dhal. Amen. In the Shafi'i school, you can break them down. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawm Al-Din. Iyaka Na'udu, Iyaka Nastani. If you are praying in the way, this way, they say, oh, you are not following our Sheikh. Yes, you are not, a, you are still need to learn. <laughs> so their focus, Awliyaullah, is about the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad And we showed, we explained before, yesterday in the previous lecture, about what they put, the nasab, the, the gene, genealogy of awliyaullah to Prophet. Yes. And that is where it is important. And as they are inheritors from Prophet وسلم, either we said physically, through blood, or through spiritually, or through both. And that's why sometimes you cannot understand them, because Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, said in Laylatul Isra' wal Mi'raj, when Prophet وسلم, went into Mi'raj, he reached a Kaaba Kausaini Aw Adna. And there he was asked, Who am I and who are you? Who are you? 
He said, you are Al-Qahar and I am your servant. We explained that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that moment, He said, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am giving you all your ummah or all human being clean and I want you to keep them in trust with you. So he presented them to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their souls. Prophet looked, subhanallah, all of them clean souls, shining. All of them awliya Allah. You think Allah create other than awliya? To Allah, all human beings, when they are created, they are awliya. Of course, you let insanu ala al-fitrah. Hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, human beings are born on innocence. Make sure that those people who are on the internet, they don't cut and paste. You have to put everything together. Yuradu al-insanu ala al-fitra. Human beings are born on sainthood. Fitra, what's fitra? On purity. When you are pure, you see. When you are pure, you can hear what people cannot hear, you can see what people cannot see, correct? Either his parents, his parents change him, or the environment, the community change him. But origina originally he is born on innocence. Right. You cannot come against the hadith of Rasul. No, it's not correct. It's correct. Either his parents make him Jew or Christian or Zoroastrian at that time. This is what was in the Arab, Arab uh, in the Gulf area, Arab Peninsula, Jazira to the Arab. So it means if they are born on purity, what you expect they are going to, they will, they are, they were. Huh? As we said in Friday today, Kuntum Khaira Ummatin Ukhrijat Linnas. You were the best nation that has been sent to humanity. Right? The best you were, where you were? You were in the Divine Presence. You were clean there, you were pure. You were wali. Allah create, Allah is perfect, create perfection. Everything is created perfect. If someone was not perfect created, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is something that cannot be accepted. Allah is perfect and He likes everything perfect. So if everything is perfect, means everyone was a saint. You were a saint, he was a saint, he was a saint. So when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, said that he presented them to him, he said, Ya Rabbi, I accept. They are very awliya, they are saints, they are pure, they are clean. As soon as he said, I'm happy, I take them as a trust, I keep them with me, he said, I need, I, you give it them to be back after Day of Judgment, Day of Judgment. Prophet said, yes. What happened at that moment? Allah sent on them, showed Prophet whatever they are going to do on, in dunya with all their sins. Because they are not obeying in dunya. They were obeying there. They were created pure there. But they changed later. Prophet said, Ya Rabbi, that's too much. I cannot do that. But you already accepted. Why you didn't check it more? You took it. Check it. How he can check? He accept them all. He said, Ya Rabbi, give me helpers. Prophet needs helpers? No, he doesn't. 
But he wants helpers means he wants representatives that represent him in every moment, in every part of this earth. Because Prophet ﷺ knows that it's going to be this earth going to be filling up and many places that you cannot reach. In the same time one cannot reach. That's why he had 124,000 Sahaba. He need them. If, if they didn't be with him, what would happen? Allah helped him with him, with them. So Allah gave him 124,000 swali. All of them, they have that relationship to Prophet, that genealogy. There is a connection. That's like a pipe coming, water coming from Prophet reaching through all of them, through that pipe, one to, after another. That's why Awliya Allah, sometimes they say, oh, because of us, this happened. Like Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. He said, because, because of me, Nuh was saved from the flood. Understood? Huh? What? What he said? He said he came after Sayyidina Nuh by five thousand years. He said because of me, Allah saved Nuh. It's a wali. As we were speaking about Sayyidina Shah Naqshband, how much Allah has given him twelve thousand. Khasiya, special station, 12,000, other than Awliyaullah in the Naqshbandi order. And other than Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Ali, yani, uh, Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Abu Bakr, no comparison. But other than that, he gave him 12,000 special stations. That he dressed them to his students. He didn't take it for himself. So Sayyidina Muhyiddin ibn Arabi said, if, if it was not me that I saved Nuh, Nuh would have, he and his boat would have sink, drowned. You know what you are speaking? He said, of course. My hand under the boat saved Nuh. What does that mean? Yeah, no, I said it before. What does that mean, Muhammad Ami? What do you mean? What's this? You see that dot, that water drop? You can see it here. So that drop is part of this. So a part of the whole is the whole. Because you cannot take it out. This is this is the whole. And this is a part of the whole. But now when it went in, it's a whole, uh, all of that water. He said, I am from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am related in genealogy to Prophet. From spiritual realm and from physical. When he, Prophet says, my hand saved Nuh, means I am part of that hand, I am in that hand. I saved Nuh also. So Allah gave Sayyidina Muhammad 124,000 wali like that devil. But they don't open. They all covered their knowledges. Sayyidina Muhyiddin ibn Arabi sacrificed himself to bring these knowledges. Why, well, yeah, Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, you want to give this knowledge to stupid people who don't understand anything. They ordered to kill you. 
keep it for yourself. Awliyaullah, they who came after him, they were saying, why you have to tell him to give diamond to those who doesn't understand diamond? Keep knowledge to yourself. That's why Abu, Sayyidina Abu Huraira said, if I will say what I learned from Prophet, they will cut my neck. I kept it. I hide it. So Sayyidina Shah Naqshban, what he is explaining from this, what I am explaining from these notes of Grand Shain, is not so, is not, is not public. <coughs> now it's become public. Because it's, there is permission from Maulana Sheikh Nazim, we are speaking. Those who likes to take it, take it. Who those who don't like to take it, we we have we are not interested in their opinions. And what we have explained about Sayyidina Shah Naqshban, this is a continuation. Grand Sheikh said, at the age of 31, of the age of Sayyidina Shah Naqshban, when he was 31, it was the, on, the, on the age 31, seven of Muharram, when his age was 31, and that year, seven of Muharram, he went for Siyaha. What Siyaha? Wondering, Wondering traveling. Travel or wandering. What is siyaha? What is wandering? You go out, you move from one place to another, is not? Yes. That's what we understand. But what they understand is not like that. When they go for siyaha, for wandering, they go to Wonderland. You know Wonderland? Uh, what's Wonderland? Full of wonders. The land that's full of wonders. Where is that land full of wonders? On earth? In heavens? In the universe? Where? Their siyaha, their, their travel, is not like our travel. Our travel, uh, we need to walk uh, from here. If they tell you walk from here to San Francisco, how many hours you need to walk? Uh, two hours, three hours, to reach five hours? Uh, if they say to you, walk to New Mexico, then you need, might be, six months. He began walking the 7th of Muharram, he came back the 14th of Muharram, which is his birthday. Sayyidina Shah Naqshband, they say that his birthday on 14th of Muharram, and he, he died on 14th of Muharram. He went for travel. Wonderland, you say? Wonder? Wondering. Wondering. But his wondering was, he didn't leave any in these seven days. He was moving with a speed that you cannot imagine. Not like speed of a plane or a rocket. He was moving, he didn't describe how, because at that time still, this is 100 years ago. Really it is uh, when he said that, that event that happened, it was 13, when he said it, it was 1326. One year, one hundred and four years, when he mentioned that story. 
but when he mentioned it, but when it happened, must be more because he was his age was thirty one only. What Allah gave him of power, as we explained two or three lectures before about Sayyidina Abu Yazid al Bastami going through this universe with the speed that Allah gave to him to reach a place that he was hearing the zikr of Sayyidina Shah al Naqshband with the Naqshbandi's followers, and he was not able to know how, much, how many they are, and he was af worried that Shah al Naqshband would tell him, What you are doing here? went back. The speed that Sayyidina Shah al Naqshband spent, as Grand Sheikh said and Maulana Sheikh Nazim saying, that he had a speed that if you put all awliyaullah of all, of all of the other tariqahs together with awliyaullah of this tariqah until Sayyidina Shah al Naqshband's time, his speed was more than all that, his movement because he was inheriting directly from Sayyidina Muhammad That's why they said, call him Ghaus. Ghaus al-Khalika. He was moving, inheriting from Prophet وسلم, the speed that Prophet, that Jibreel took Prophet وسلم, on Burak with a speed that cannot be described in a in a, in a short time, when he went and came back, Prophet Sallallahu his matter is still warm. Here it took him seven days. But, because he doesn't have that speed, he might have a drop of that speed of Prophet Sallallahu But with that drop, it's like an ocean of speed. He was moving in that wonderland. He saying, that he did not leave one planet that Allah created in this universe except visiting it. Not one planet he left where there is creation. Don't think we are only alone. There are creations that Allah created, no one knows them except Prophet and Prophet didn't give everything to Allah. he gave them a drop of that knowledge he said in these seven uh, days. days and nights he went through all these planets he moved in 7,000 planets and he took 7,000 knowledge on ev from every planet Allah gave to him through Prophet ﷺ. There was not one mawqa. There was location. not location. location from these locations except he visited it. And he knew why it was created and who was there and one was created, and what kind of knowledge Allah gave to such creations? He learned that. Allah addressed him. And after that, he came back all the way to his room from where he left. It took seven days. And the night of his birthday, it was a gift to him coming from Allah and his Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam, that they gave him at that time when we spoke many times that Sayyidina Shah al Naqshband will fill four paradises from uh, in the day of judgment from uh, uh, Ummatul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Yazid said what about the rest of all awliya cannot fill three paradises and all the Ummah will be saved. If Sayyidina Nashband, Shah Nashband alone, he's going to fill four paradises. That reward at that night was given to him as his gift for his birthday. It was on 14 of Muharram. When he, that came to him, Sayyidina Shah Nashband, he was sweating with shyness. 
from the, in the presence of Prophet and he was asking that if he be able to be given the permission to dress his student, the follower of the Naqshbandi, without leaving one behind. Anyone who attended Zikr even five minutes in his life in an association of a Naqshbandi sheikhs with students, even these sheikhs are uh, uh, real or not. Even they are not real, but they say we are Naqshbandi sheikhs, fake ones. Because they put in their mouths that they are Naqshbandi, mm. means they were with Sayyidina Shah Naqshband on 14th of Muharram when he began to dress them with all these knowledges that he was given from Prophet wasallam through these 7,000 planets that he visited. From every planet, 7,000 knowledge he was getting. He asked to dress his followers that in the day of judgment they will appear with that light on them. At that moment, when he was sitting, and one by one the Naqshbandis were coming in front of him. Coming, coming, coming. With their, the sheikhs with their student. The sheikhs with their student. First, the real sheikhs with their student. The fake sheikhs, they cannot be sheikhs in front of Sayyidina Shah Naqshban. They cannot come as, say, we are the sheikhs and they are the students. They will be called, like all the others, they will be dressed without us. But at the first, all this golden chain of the Naqshban, the Sufi order, will come with their followers. With their followers, with their followers, with their followers. Not the followers that you only know physically, they might have a lot of followers that no one knows about them and they are their sheikhs in different areas, in different ways, either through dreams, either through visions, either through inspirations, either through them moving through Thai with the power of Thai to these countries and giving them teachings in different face, uh, physical shapes. But why not? At that moment when he was dressing with every sheikh, with his student, everyone with his student, everyone with his student, Sayyidina al-Khadr appeared. Because it is his turn, because he is Naqshbandi. So his turn came and he asked a question. Ya Shah Naqshband, I have a question, he said, say, Why, why you are lowering yourself to reach the level of this student? Because the students are a lower level. From the highest level that you are in the divinely, in the divine, honorable divine presence of Prophet wasallam. There you are getting from his reality all these uh, man, uh, uh, different lights that Allah is manifesting on him and him is sending to you. Why you are lowering yourself to the level of these followers, Allah? Even awliya Allah, they have sometimes some, uh, some, uh, what you saw, poking the others, teasing, teasing the others. He looked at him and he said, Ya Khadr, I will tell you why. And we leave this for next time. Allah. Allah. Better keep coming. To bring Sheikh Yasser back. Yeah, or else we will not coming. He will not come. I'll watch him coming. Al yasta wa wuna al-ladhi. Al yasta wa al-ladhina ya'lamuna wa al-ladhina la ya'lamun. No. Ya Allah, bring that. I ask Salma, she knows.